Hey guys, how's it going? Philip at Trade Genius. Uh, this video, I wanted to actually dive into an interesting uh, analysis of Bitcoin, and I think you'll you'll find the the points pretty interesting and in how you know we're really in for some massive long term gains with this thing. Um, real quickly, too, we are going to have a webinar, the Bob and Phil Show, tomorrow Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's uh, tomorrow, the 27th of September. Again, Bob and Phil show. Uh, we're gonna kind of go through stocks and cryptos. Also gonna show you kind of the toolkit we use that you can uh, basically uh, trade on all the stuff that we trade, stocks, cryptos, uh, binaries. And uh, you know, I think you'll really see the value in that. And we'll have some specials for you guys for watching tomorrow. So check that out tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. All right, guys, let's dive into this video. Trade Genius. All right, guys, so um, there's a company, Chain Analysis, uh, and I'll, I'll put a link uh, to, the, to, the, to the website, uh, but they have a blog, and it's really interesting reads on, they kind of give periodic updates as to like, kind of the state of who's who's holding bitcoin is it speculative is it is it in wallets um is it lost has it moved that kind of stuff but uh you know it's interesting the information that comes out from them and i like this one clip from them they said chain analysis found that from august to december the amount of bitcoin held by service providers like exchange platforms increased by just ninety three thousand two hundred and ninety nine coins when viewed in light of the roughly 1 million Bitcoin added to personal wallets over the same period, this implies the number of people using self-custodian solutions, so their own wallets, hardware wallets, they're holding not that much coin, um, is increasing at a faster rate than that of mere speculators. So here you have a period of that time where 1 million coins uh, were added to personal wallets versus just 93,000 added to the exchanges. So that's a huge number. Uh, that we're talking about that isn't being uh, really speculated, it's being held. So I think that shows you guys, like just in that little nutshell there, uh, just the amount of, of when we, and we're gonna look at a chart here, what's left, you know, is really small. And that's where we, that's why we see the price increases that we do at the velocity that we see them at, where it's a big blow off top. We're just gonna see more and more of those. Um, we can switch over to the website. This is blog.chainalysis.com. So they kind of go into how they break things down. So I do definitely recommend it, blog.chainalysis.com. And notice this chart here. Uh, basically what it is, is if you look at these bluish sections, what that is is, so these are investment coins. Uh, the, this here is, likely lost just because they haven't moved in so long and then this section here is lost and unmined coins left and then you have the stuff that they can tell has been either speculation like on exchanges or service uh, transactional coins and things of that nature that are tied to like transaction fees and stuff like that but i mean that's you know if you look at what are the investment coins that's 30 percent you have 7% that are lost, that's 37%. But the, the minority here is what's actually like being speculative. So there's a big chunk here. This 29%, again, is either lost or unmined coins. So again, when we start seeing demand, then you've got you know a small, you know the minority outstanding here. Uh, things can get, it can increase in price quickly so you just have to keep in mind that it's you know bitcoin has this unique supply and demand and again when things you know get bullish uh, you know that thing gets tilted really fast what was interesting to note was that they found that from the period of time where uh you know it went from december to 2017 to april 2018 so basically from the top to the bottom uh long-term investors actually sold approximately 24 billion dollars worth of bitcoin so these were guys may have been looking at you know a blow off top to happen and said you know what we're exiting we're out and and that's it's nice to know that you can see that these guys tracked the long-term stuff and and saw that it was older coins coins that had been moved in a long time actually go out into the ecosystem 
This eventually is just bullish because now what you're doing is you're spreading the amount of Bitcoin out as opposed to being concentrated. You know, it's not going to be healthy to have a large concentration in a small amount of wallets. Um, that's where these big whale moves can come from. So the more that this happens, you know, it's a growing process. You know, Bitcoin isn't going to go to the moon overnight, but it is a unique asset class that has the ability to really make large moves and again it's because of the unique supply and demand of it you know how much is out there approximately uh, you know there won't be any more so it's it's just unique in that fashion and it's very limited supply on a global scale i mean it's basically a rarity on a global scale so uh interesting to see that they were able to track the fact that that a large number of older coins were then sold off into the market but that's bullish you know that's the more people have bitcoin the better ultimately the more stable the price becomes but uh you know you keep in mind the unique nature of this thing and that how how little coins are really outstanding if you really think about it also too keep in mind 2020 when the halving happens that's when the amount of uh, bitcoin reduces by another 50 percent you're gonna have that much less coins entering on the market from miners trying to make a profit so you know, long term, looking back on the charts, this is an extremely bullish environment, even though it seems like we're just in the bear market that's never going to end. But like we've shown you guys, you know, there's a there's, these are this is a pattern that's been repeating since Bitcoin's really taken off from the first bull run uh, way back, even if you t are talking like from a, a penny to 40 cents in that area. So just keep that in mind, guys. And, you know, like we uh, we have levels that we think are solid entry levels. And again, the best place is to kind of ladder in at historically oversold uh, points. And obviously, you know, this level here with Bitcoin is certainly one of those areas. But, uh, you know, that's what we try to do. Try to get you in on this long term. I think we're going to have an ex impressive run over the next two to three years. And, uh, you know, don't let the FUD get in the way. Um, you know, Wall Street's getting on board with this. And I think, uh, you know, we've got we've got some pretty impressive growth ahead of us. Um, if you just take into all the dynamics, take into all the consideration that now the money in Wall Street is able to get into this thing with the custodian uh, solutions that are now um, made available to them. Uh, we we've, we've really haven't seen uh, a big inflow of institutional funds just yet. It has happened, but you know, things like pension funds and, and, and large, large institutional inflows just hasn't happened yet. So, all right, guys, well, that's pretty much it for this video. Check it out, blog.chainalysis.com. I'll put a link down below. Interesting read, and I thought I'd share that with you guys. All right, I'll see you on tomorrow's video, guys. Please hit like and subscribe. Take care. Bye. Trade Genius.